Hey Internet, PRL here. Fun fact, as of 2014, Pew Research data indicated that the average user on Facebook has roughly 200 friends. That in itself is pretty fascinating. You see, it's unlikely that these people are what we would call true friends, since experimental studies in social psychology have shown that the average amount of people that the human mind can actually care about consistently is about 150. But what's truly mind-bending isn't the number of acquaintances that we have, but the amount of connections that they do. More likely than not, your friends have more friends than you do. Let's say that you have 100 friends. Statistically speaking, they will probably have about 190. But what's truly baffling is this pattern continues for them. For all of us. This isn't a riddle or a brain teaser. Well, I mean, not like in the sense of the Sphinx or anything like that. There are no hidden clues or hints to try and make this any less confusing. Nor are these claims some sort of like formless metaphor for a greater point. No, this is an empirical and verifiable phenomenon. I didn't just pluck those numbers out of thin air. Facebook did a study in 2011 of friends and friends of friends, and they came to those numbers that I mentioned earlier. 100 is the median number of friend counts, and the average overall is 190, so our friends are more likely than not going to have more friends than we do. So, what's going on here? Well, as it turns out, this is nothing more than a metaphysical manifestation of a well-known sociological problem. It's called, aptly, the Friendship Paradox. In 1991, the American Journal of Sociology published an article by Dr. Scott L. Feld provocatively titled, Why Your Friends Have More Friends Than You Do, which explains the mathematics behind the friendship paradox. Fortunately, he also provided a whole bunch of graphs and diagrams that, you know, are a little more conducive for YouTube video formats. Let's say that there are eight girls in a class. Bethany, Stephanie, Elena, Jacqueline, Destiny, Patrice, Claire, and Tammy. As befitting her name, Tammy only has one friend, Claire. Since the friendships are reciprocal, Claire has two friends, Tammy and Patrice. Patrice is friends with Claire, Stephanie, and Elena. Elena with Stephanie, Patrice, Jacqueline, and Destiny. Jacqueline has Elena and Destiny. Stephanie is friends with Elena, Patrice, Destiny, and Bethany. Bethany only has one friend, however, Stephanie. Presumably because she has a thing for assonance. Last but not least, Destiny is friends with Elena, Jacqueline, and Stephanie. Now let's get a rundown on the number of friends that they all have. Tammy and Bethany have one. Jacqueline and Claire have two. Destiny and Patrice have three, and Stephanie and Elena have four. As you can see, a graph of this friendship pattern will be skewed to the left, because there are some who have a greater number than the others, and that pulls the mean away from it, sort of like how Facebook has it, where some people have over 5,000 friends. <sighs> Closer look at the chart, we can see the percentage of connections that each person has that themselves have more friends. Or, to put it in a less confusing way, how many people have friends that have more friends than they do? All the people characterized by the fact that at least half of their friends have more friends than they do are in green. Those with more than half of their friends having less friends than they do are in red. As you can see, there are way more green letters than red ones. In fact, if you tally it up, you'll find that of the eight girls, six of them experience the friendship paradox. You could certainly look at this and disclaim as an endemic characteristic of that graph, and your skepticism wouldn't exactly be too far off. After all, there are definitely some patterns that can be drawn out so that everyone has an equal number of friends. The issue is that there is no reason at all to believe that human social networks will organize like this. Fact of the matter is that this phenomenon is mathematically certain to occur in most organic populations. I mean, shoot, Facebook estimates that it happens to about 85% of their users. But why is it certain? It's because the people who are friends with you are more likely to have more friends simply because of the fact that they are the kind of person to make friends with you. It's like with class size. The reason that most people don't ever experience a class that is below the mathematical average is because by simply being there, they're bumping up the number of students that need to be counted. The reason that small classes are small are because, by definition, very few students can have them. Similarly, most of your friends will have more friends than you simply because they're the kind of person to make friends with you. I mean, which do you think is more likely to occur? Making friends with a social butterfly or with a lone wolf? It's like you're playing a game of Plinko when your friendship is the ball. Which is more likely to happen, that you land in the section with the red squares or with the blue squares? The red squares are like the kids who make more friends. It simply has more friend slots available for you to fall into. So it's not so much a paradox as it is an instance of classification bias. And although this is a bit sad and puzzling on the surface, it's actually a reason for us to be happy. If if your friends weren't the kind of people to make a lot of friends, they probably wouldn't have been friends with you in the first place. All of those experiences and fun times that you had wouldn't have happened at all, and you would be totally remiss. And the great thing is, is that for a small but definitely not insignificant percentage of your friends, the same holds true for you. And it's here where I hope we all realize that it's a bit silly to be comparing the quantity of the connections that we have with each other. When in reality, 
that's not what matters. What matters isn't how many, but the quality of the connections and the experiences that we share with one another. There are no internet. And thanks for watching. Thanks.